As we've seen, C has a number of built-in types, and if we want to define our own types, we just describe how they're constructed in terms of those built-in types. If we want to have our own type name, like number, then we can use the type def form. So here I've defined that number is a type that corresponds to int, that it's constructed by just using an integer. Uh, and that means, in fact, that number is just an alias for the type int. But I can use it as a as a, a type at the same level as int. I can say that twice here it takes a number and returns a number. Um, I can say that set twice takes a pointer to a number, um, calls twice on the value at that pointer, and then updates the pointer. And I can use it in this way here. So we can copy that over and try it out. And it works the way you expect. 2 is printed out because we uh, declared a local number, initialized it to 1, but called set twice on it. Now it doesn't matter whether we call number or int to be the type of v. The compiler is going to be happy either way because those two types are completely equivalent. So C doesn't really give you that kind of abstraction behind a type name. If you want to hide the representation, it just says that int and number are equivalent. Um, on the other hand, if I use double here, then it will report a type error when I try to compile the program. Right, it'll say that uh, I expected a number star, but it was given a double star. So the compiler knows that number star and int star are the same, and it knows that number star and double star are different. We can uh, also define new types that are represented as pointers. So here, number pointer is an integer pointer. So I could change set twice to instead of saying number star p, I can say number pointer p, um, which is equivalent to int star p. And since number is equivalent to int, that's equivalent to what we had before. So in general, the notation for type def is imagine writing a variable declaration, stick type def on the front of it, and then instead of using a variable name, you put a type name there. So just like int v declares a v integer, Type def int t declares t to be an alias for the type int. And that works even if you're declaring something that looks like a pointer variable. If you stick type def on the front, that means define t as the type of a pointer to an integer. Or here's another example. Care star s would declare s to be a variable that holds a string. So we could say type def care star capital S string, and that would make capital S string an alias for care star. We could add more stars. Um, if we said int star star p, that would be declaring p to be a pointer to a pointer to an integer. Right. So if we do uh, type def int star star t, that means that t is an integer pointer pointer. Is the type, has a type corresponds to an integer pointer pointer. And finally, we can do this with arrays. So here we have a variable declaration of a as an array of five integers. Here I have a type declaration saying that zip t means an array of five integers. And here, for example, just like I could say int uh, u of u 5 and then provide five numbers to initialize the array, I can say zip t u of u and provide five integers, provided I've uh, used this type definition before. And then I can write a function mail to, which takes a zip t as an argument, which is the same as taking an array of five elements as an argument, which as a function argument, of course, is the same as taking a pointer to integers.